and girls. We've missed being with you for the last couple of months. We're so happy to be back and to be able to share with you some more Sabbath School programs. I'm Miss Rhonda. Here's Roman, my grandson, who's going to be helping us today. He's dressed like little boy Jesus. Could you guess that? And our program this time is about happy boy Jesus. We want you to come and enjoy it with us. Now, if you tell your moms and dads, in the description below, there will be a link. And in that link, you can find all of the words to all the songs that we're singing with all of our props listed as well. So if you have your mom and dad, click on that link. It will take you to our church website and you can print this off for yourself. So you'll have all the words and you'll have all the props that you need so that you can do this program with us at home. It'll be so much more fun. I'm so happy you're here with us, and we're gonna get ready now to start our Sabbath School. Well, it's time for Sabbath School to begin, and if you listen carefully, you might hear the, the clock tick-tocking and telling it's time for Sabbath School. So let's get our sticks and let's make the clock sound together. Are you ready? Be quiet and listen to the clock. Be quiet and listen to the sounds of clock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's time to ring our Sabbath bells. Are you ready to ring your Sabbath bell with us this morning and welcome the Sabbath day? <laughs> doors of the church and see who has come. And each one of you has come to Sabbath school too, and I'm so glad you're here with us. Before we do anything else, boys and girls, we want to invite Jesus to come and be here with us, don't we? So when we pray, we bend our knees, Hold our hands, close our eyes, and bow our heads. Can you do that with us as we pray this morning? When it's time to pray, I bend my knees. for this wonderful Sabbath day. I thank you for all these boys and girls that they can come and join us in our Sabbath school. We invite you to be here with us, Jesus, and your angels too. Thank you, Jesus, for coming, and we love you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Amen. Every week, we study our Sabbath school lessons at home, don't we? And our Sabbath school lessons come from a very special book. Do you know what that book is? What is it, Roman? The Bible. It's the Bible. I have a real little Bible here. Roman has a pretend little Bible, and inside it has lots of pictures. This is God's word to us, and it is very, very special. So as we learn our lessons every week from the Bible, we should be thanking God for his word. It's his special word just for us. Shall we sing our Bible song, the B-I-B-L-E? Let's sing it together as you look at your little Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the word for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Comfort of my own home, let's do our memory verse. 
our memory verse this Sabbath is talking about the story of Moses. Do you remember baby Moses we had a few weeks ago? I do too. That was a great story about Moses and the bulrushes. Do you remember that, Rona? Mm -hmm. Okay, our memory verse this week says this. Now you say it after me, just like Roman does. Bread will be given him. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. His water will be sure. And where is that found? Isaiah, Isaiah. 33, 16. 33, 16. That's great. Okay, boys and girls, are you ready to go to Nazareth for our program today? Let's go. I'm so glad you're learning your memory verses, boys and girls. Putting your God's word in your little brain is a really good thing for you to do. Let's clap our hands and sing, I'm glad I learned my memory verse. told them it's time to go back to Nazareth it's safe and so Mary and Joseph got on their donkey and little boy Jesus and away they went back to Nazareth so we're going to take a donkey ride this morning if you don't have a donkey at your house maybe you could get mommy or daddy to get down on their hands and knees and give you a ride I think that would be fun too are you ready Roman okay let's go for a ride Another way that 
little boy Jesus would help was he would help with children. Jesus loved little children and especially little babies. And if a baby was crying, I can just imagine little Jesus would grab that little baby and love it and hug it and tell it not to cry. So I'm going to get out my little baby and Roman's got a nice baby. Let's rock our babies and tell them not to cry, shall we? Daddy Joseph was a carpenter, and he worked in his shop all day long building furniture, I can imagine, and anything that was needed that people wanted. Well, I can imagine that little boy Jesus liked to help his daddy in the, in the carpenter shop, don't you think so? Let's help Joseph in the carpenter shop today by getting a hammer or a little saw pretend ones of course and let's help in the carpenter shop shall we something to play with or something that they did where they had to take turns. So let's take turns this morning. Roman's going to ride, then it'll be your turn, okay? I'll take turns with my tractor. I'll take turns with you. I'll take turns with my tractor. For Jesus wants me to. All right, are you done your I'm sure that Jesus also had two of something and maybe somebody else didn't have any and he wanted them to be happy too so Jesus learned to share what he had with others maybe it wasn't a horse like Roman has but maybe it was even his food maybe two pieces of bread and he saw somebody who didn't have any and he was willing to share with them so let's pretend we're sharing this morning, shall we? I have two horses and a few left, and you have no mercy and that's too bad. I'll share two horses and a few, and that's what Jesus wants me to do. I can imagine that Jesus had some pet animals, can't you? Maybe he had a puppy dog. Or maybe a kitty cat. And Jesus took good care of them, I'm sure. He loved to feed his animals. Would you like to feed a bone or a treat to your dog or cat while we sing our song? and he took such gentle care of them. Let's gently pet our kitty cats while we sing. Little Jesus liked to pet the kitty cats, the kitty cats, the kitty cats. Little Jesus liked to pet the kitty cats when he was a child. Do you hear the bird roaming? That's a beautiful sound, isn't it? I 
I love to hear the birdies sing, and I'll bet Jesus did too. Shall we pretend we're birds today and sing along while we flap our wings and fly around like a birdie? Okay, let's do it. Little Jesus liked to hear the birdies sing. I can imagine that Jesus liked to sing too, don't you? I think so. When we sing, it somehow makes us happy, doesn't it? It lifts our spirits. So we're not only going to sing, we're going to play some instruments. So if you have some instruments, even if you have an oatmeal can that you can pound on, let's make some joyful noise to Jesus as we sing, shall we? Not only did little Jesus learn to sing, but I'm sure that little Jesus learned to pray too, didn't he? He loved to pray to his Father in heaven. And what do we do when we pray, Roman? How can we pray? We can kneel, we can bow our head, fold our hands, and close our eyes. Let's do that while we sing this time, shall we? Jesus, I am sure he loved going to the synagogue, which is what they called church back in those days, with his mom and dad on Sabbath mornings. And before he would go at his home, I'm sure he studied the scriptures. His mommy taught him from the scripture scrolls, just like your mommy and daddy teach you from the Bible. So Jesus would go every week as he would go to the synagogue and he would see the priest there or the rabbis reading from the scrolls. And as he got older, he went to the temple in Jerusalem with his mom and dad. And he had learned the scripture scrolls so well that he was able to talk with the very learned men there in the temple. Let's take our little scrolls and let's sing this morning about Jesus in the temple. Too, but I love the Sabbath. The Sabbath is such a happy day, and I'm sure Jesus loved it too. Let's clap our hands this morning and sing Sabbath is a happy day, shall we? Sabbath is a happy day. Jesus' mom and dad thought that having Jesus in their home made their home very happy. Just like your mom and dad are so happy that you're in their family. Let's sing this morning about with Jesus in our family. We have such a happy home, right? Let's sing together. With Jesus in the family, happy, happy home.
boys and girls, Jesus made his home such a happy place to be in, and he was happy all the time. He was never pouting, was he? And do you know, he's happy even now, and he loves us so, so much, and I want to show my love for Jesus too, don't you? Let's bring our hearts this morning and give them to Jesus. Jesus loves me. to our Bible lesson. Let's get some wiggles out, shall we? Can you stand up tall like with me and with Roman? And let's do some actions together. I can stand up tall like this, like this. So I can stand up tall for Jesus made me that way. Can you swing your arms? I can swing my arms like this, like this. So I can swing my arms for Jesus made me that way. Can you march? I can march around It's time for our lesson now, boys and girls. And this week, as I told you, our story is about Moses. Now Moses, when he grew up Roman, he got big and he lived in the palace of the king. Remember that? Mm -hmm. But he decided when there came a time, God said to him, okay, it's time now, Moses. You need to take my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt and to the promised land that I gave them. So Moses went. That was going to be a big job for him, wasn't it? He went and as he was speaking to God, he said, Oh God, that's too big of a job for me. I can't do that by myself. How am I going to lead all those people out? And what did God tell Moses? He said, I will be with you. Isn't that what he told him? And he also sent his brother with him, his big brother, Aaron. And Jesus said, tell the people to pack their things. It's time to leave and go to the land of Cana that I have promised you. So everybody packed up all of their belongings and they got in a big long line with not just them and their belongings, but even their animals. Can you see the animals? Mm -hmm. And what was this? God, God, God. Was that God's presence mm -hmm. in the big cloud? It was. And Moses led the people out of Egypt to the promised land. As they were on their way to the promised land, were there nice hotels or motels for them to stop and stay during the night? Well, where in the world did they stay? Tents. You're right. They lived in tents and they would set up their tents and they would cook their food and they would sleep in their tents and the next day they'd get up or maybe they'd stay there a few days and then God would say, okay, it's time to move on and on they would go towards the promised land. Well, one day the mommies and the daddies went to get their food for their children and guess what they found out? There was no 
food. You're right. There was no food. It was a famine. Now, how would you feel if you had no food to eat? If you came downstairs and said, Grams, I'm hungry, and I said, we have no food. Um, I would eat myself. <laughs> well, I hope not. That wouldn't be a good thing to do. I think that would be really kind of scary, wouldn't it? And you might think, what am I going to do? Where am I going to get food? But the people went to Moses and they were saying the same thing. We have no food. We have no food. And what did Moses say? Did Moses say, oh, we'll go to the store and buy food? No. Were there Trust in the Lord. You're right. That's what he said. Now, were there stores along the way? No, there were no stores along the way either. So Moses said, you just trust God. God promised us he would take care of us. And tomorrow morning, don't worry, there will be food. And the next day, when they woke up and went outside their tents, what did they find? Food. They found little round white things all over the ground. And they said, what is it? What is it? And they went and picked it up. And some of them tasted it. And how did it taste? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yes, it did taste good. And they said it tasted like wafers with honey. That sounds like it would taste pretty good to me. Don't you think so too? I think so. And as the people said, what is it? What is it? That in their language was called manna. So we call it when we say God gave manna to the children of Israel. Manna means, what is it? Because they didn't know what it was. It was angel food. And God had sent it from heaven for them. Now, every day they would wake up and God told them, every day you can go out and pick up as much as you will need just for that day. If you pick up a whole bunch of manna and take it into your house and try to save it for the next day, it's gonna stink and have worms in it. Would you like to eat that? Me either. I don't want stinky food that has worms crawling in it. Ooh. But God said, when you go out on Friday, you pick up double enough for Friday and enough for Sabbath. Because on Sabbath, I'm not sending manna. He was teaching them how important it is to prepare our food for the Sabbath ahead of time, wasn't he? And not to work on the Sabbath. They had forgotten that rule of, of God's. And so God was teaching them, you pick up double on Friday and I will keep it pure and good and fresh and it won't get worms in it and it won't be stinky because that's my special Sabbath day. And so the people would go out every day, they'd pick it up and if they got too much, ooh, the next morning, pew, it was stinky and had worms in it. But on Friday, when they went out and they picked it up enough for two days, it stayed good and fresh on Sabbath and they could eat it on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And they were so, so happy that God had given them food. But then, do you know what happened then? Did I show you the next picture? Oh, I bet I didn't. Let's look at it. Do you see here? There's the boys and girls and the moms and the dads. What are they doing? Picking up manna. Picking up the manna. You're sure right. And then they said, oh, we've got food, but now Moses, we have no water. We're gonna all just die of thirst. And what did Moses say? Was he all nervous and upset and worried? No. He said, God promised that he would take care of us. God will send us water. So Moses prayed to God and God told him to take his stick and to go and hit a great big rock. And when Moses hit that great big rock, do you know what happened? The rock broke and water came. Gushing. The water came gushing out of the rock. Now, I think this is a pretty good picture, boys and girls, but you've got to remember, there were so many people with Moses. 
that I'll bet it just gushed and poured out of that rock in just floods for the people so that they could drink. Did God take care of them? <laughs> yes, he did. He took care of Moses and the children of Israel. Now, let me ask you this. Will God take care of you? Yeah. What if sometime maybe your dad and mom are out of work and they say, we don't have any money to buy any food. Do you believe that God can give you food even when we don't have money to buy it? Yeah. I do too, because God has promised us boys and girls when we are faithful to him and if we call on him, that he will give us everything we need, whether it is food or whether it is water or whatever it is, God loves us and he will take care of us. Shall we say a prayer and thank Jesus for that? And then we'll say our memory verse. What do you think? Okay. All right, let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, that you promised to give us food and water and whatever it is that we needed, need from day to day, just as you gave it to Moses and all of the children of Israel and to many other people all throughout history. You have been faithful, God, and we know that you will be faithful to us too. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Will you say your memory verse one more time with me? Bread will be given him. Bread will be given him. His water shall be sure. His, his water will be sure. sure. Isaiah 33, 16. Isaiah 33, uh, 33, 16. 16. Very good. Okay, boys and girls, I'm so glad you've been with us this week. It's time now to sing our goodbye song. We've had a wonderful time with you this week, boys and girls. And we're going to miss you until we see you again next Sabbath. So let's say goodbye to each other, shall we? Our Sabbath song is over and we